onto the set of real numbers such that f of x is x squared minus x. Show that f is one to one. Now there are many ways you can do this, but I'm going to take the graphical approach. That is what we're gonna to take today. So taking a graphical approach, f of x is x squared minus x. First thing I'm going to do is complete the square. To complete the square, I half this, so I'm gonna get x minus one, all square subtract one. That's how I complete the square. And I know that this is for the domain where x is greater than or equal to one. All right, and so if this is the curve, then this is what happened. I'm gonna draw a quadratic curve. And the minimum point is one, negative one. That's what I have, the minimum point is one, negative one. But then remember for the domain of the function, so let me put in the x and y axis first. Um, let's use blue. X is one, so x being zero is here. All right, so. Don't want it to go too far down. The sketch in the axis. All right, so this is valid for the X and the Y axis. Not quite valid. I'm gonna re-sketch the curve a little better. Yeah. This look like it now. Now this is the curve, right? This is the curve of f of x, but then tell you that the function is defined for x greater than or equal to one. So we can remove this part of the curve and so this is all we have left back. So if this is all we have left back, what we can then do is do a, a horizontal line test. So we're gonna do a for, horizontal line test so doing a horizontal line test, we notice that it only have one point of intersection. So writing it down, horizontal line test only detects one point of intersection, all right? So the horizontal line test is only detecting one point of intersection. If the horizontal line test, as you can see, only detect one point of intersection, hence f is one to one. So that's how you can show this. You can do it in different other ways, but this is the easy way to do it. All right, nice, so that's seven marks. That's part A. Well, let's look at part B. Part B says, f of x is defined as three x plus two and g of x is e to the two x. Find f inverse and g inverse. So first thing now is, in order to find inverse, you have to interchange x and y. So x is actually three f inverse plus two. And then you make f inverse but the subject. So what we're gonna get is f inverse of x. If I transpose and make f inverse the subject, I will get x minus two over three. 
All right, so that takes care of part. That takes care of that part. Now for G inverse, now they tell us that G of X is e to the two X. And so I'm gonna replace X and write that X is equal to e times two times G inverse. So I'm gonna take ln of both sides to get that ln X is equal to the log e, log of e is one, log of e is one, and so I just get two times g inverse. Then I divide through by two to get that g inverse of x. G inverse of x is working out to be dividing through by two, I will get a half ln x. So that's g inverse, nice. Now it says find fg of x. fg of x is put in f. fg of x is put in g of x into f. Let's do that. f g of x. fg of x is equal to put in g of x into f. So it becomes three times g of x, where g of x is e to the two x. plus two, so that's fg of x, nice and easy. Now it says show that fg inverse is the same as g inverse f inverse. So we need to find the inverse of this function. All right, so let's call fg inverse y for now. So interchanging them would get that x is equal to, 3y plus 2. And you make y the subject. Wait, why would I do that? My apologies here. All right. So call fg of x, y, they interchange x and y. So you're going to write that x is equal to 3 times e to the 2y plus 2, where I'm calling y f, f inverse g inverse, all right? So I need to make y the subject, so I subtract 2 from both sides, and then I divide through by 3, all right? And that's going to give me e to the 2y. That's giving me e to the 2y. Since I'm getting e to the 2y, I'm going to take ln of both sides. And so what that work ought to be is, from what I'm seeing, fg inverse is going to be equal to, I take the log of both sides, and then I divide by 2. So fg inverse is working out to be, Shouldn't have skipped that step, but just for the space, it's a half ln x minus two over three. Nice and easy. That's f g inverse. Now, of course, we need to find what is g f g inverse f inverse. So we need to put f inverse into g. So let's find, put f inverse, f inverse into G. So put in f inverse into G. So G inverse, f inverse. That's gonna be equal to put in f inverse into G inverse. So put x minus two over three into G inverse. Now we're gonna get a half. Voila, it's the same already. It's the same. So it's a half. Here is G inverse and here is F inverse. F inverse into G inverse, you get a half ln, replace X with F inverse. And so it's a half ln X minus two over three. All right. From these two, 
I'm going to connect them right here. From these two, clearly we can conclude hence, or you can say therefore, FG inverse, clearly we can say that FG inverse is the same as G inverse F inverse. That takes care of this part of the question. Nice and easy, soft. Part C. Part C says to solve three x squared plus four x plus one less than or equal to five. So we have a quadratic inequality.